A woman who claims to be a former NASA employee claims to have seen evidence of the most monumental cover-up in space history in 1979, as she saw two human figures in space suits walk calmly towards the Viking Lyander which is the grandfather of today's Mars Curiosity rover, across the Martian surface. Jackie called into Coast to Coast Antimeridium in America this year and asked the presenter to solve a 27-year-old mystery for her. She claimed to have been working for NASA, handling down link telemetry from the Lyander, the first vehicle to send back images of Mars surface, when she saw two people walking on the surface. That old Viking rover was running around, she said, saying that she and six colleagues were watching on multiple screens and I saw two men in space suits, not the bulky suits we normally used, but they looked protective. They came over the horizon walking to the Viking Explorer. Naturally, UFO and conspiracy websites have lapped this up, with some claiming that the humans may have been there to polish the Lander's solar panels. This seems a little odd, considering that if there were humans there, Presumably they could just fill the lander with petrol instead or take photographs themselves. There were probably about half a dozen of us downstairs, Jackie said. We were just maintaining the equipment. Then they cut off our video feed. We ran upstairs, but they locked the door and taped paper over the door so we couldn't see. My question is, were they our guys or other beings? Other conspiracy theorists claim there were secret landings on Mars in the 60s, and the Apollo landings were actually a cover-up for wider exploration of the solar system. Former CIA pilot John Lear claims that NASA landed on Mars in 1966, and that humans adapted to breathe the thin Martian atmosphere. It should also be noted, however, that Leah believes that human souls travel to the moon when they die to be processed inside a mile-high glass tower, and that the toxic, crushingly dense Venus is actually green and beautiful. Nigel Watson, author of the Hames UFO Investigations Manual, says, these accounts of secret space missions seem to be growing in number, and reminds me of the infamous Project Sapo. In November 2005, a contact called Anonymous, who said they worked for the US Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, started sending information about an extraordinary alien exchange program called Project Sapo. Basing his claims on a 3,000-page document written in the late 1970s, he boldly claimed that six aliens were recovered from the Roswell crash. Claims that aliens living or dead were recovered from the Roswell crash are nothing new, but in this case it was stated that an alien survivor from the crash, called Ed One, helped to organize 12 specially trained people to visit his home planet Sapo, in the Zeta Reticuli solar system. This mission occurred in 1965 and they remained there until 1978. During their stay two of them died, two remained on the planet and the rest, after returning to Earth, have died because of the high levels of radiation they were exposed to on Sapo. Bill Ryan who posted these claims online concluded that, the supposed story is a mixture of disinformation that is truth mixed with added fictional elements and naturally occurring compounded errors, surrounding a core of extraordinary truth. Yep. Wildcard Line, you're on the air with us. Hi there. Hi. Uh, I'm having an interesting night tonight, aren't we? It is, indeed. And where might we be? I'm Jackie. I'm from... Uh... Well, North Las Vegas. Okay, but, Jackie, go ahead. Okay. Uh, John, I'm hoping you can solve a 27-year-old mystery for me. Uh, do you know what was going on in 1979? Uh, where? 
well on Mars? No. Okay. What was going on at 79 on Mars? Well, I I used to work at NASA during that time and uh, handling downlink telemetry and uh, one night on our video monitors while, you know, the uh, little Viking rover was uh, running around, I see two men in suits, not necessarily space suits. I mean, they looked protective, but uh, they didn't look like the bulky things that, you know, our astronauts use. But they came over the horizon walking towards the uh, uh, Viking Explorer, and uh, our vision got cut off. I didn't see what they did with it or anything else. They were probably making repairs. Well, that's why I was wondering if they were our guys or not, because yeah, you they know were, what kind of suits they wore? Pardon? Do you know what kind of suits they wore? In well, they wouldn't have to wear very much. I mean, the atmosphere is... Uh, there's enough atmosphere to walk around without a spacesuit on Mars, same as there is on the moon. I mean, there's not, it's like about 15,000 feet on Earth. Now, uh, you can go through a 24-hour acclimatization uh, program on the moon and you can walk around uh, without a spacesuit. Uh, same thing on Mars. You don't need a spacesuit. If they had one, it was just minimal. Did you have any other witnesses there while you saw this? Oh, there's about a, a well, out of the workers, there's probably about a half a dozen of us, because uh, we were... Uh, you see the typical NASA things where we got all the monitors. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you had a few people out there monitoring the monitors. Yeah, you got about, you know, the people that were up there, and then there's about a half a dozen of us downstairs, because, you know, it, it, it was just maintaining the uh, equipment, because everything went wrong. We had to get it up quick so that it didn't just be uh, telemetry. You folks must have been amazed at what you saw. I, yeah, because, you know... Uh, when we saw that, they cut off our video downstairs. Of course, we ran upstairs, and, and uh, you know, they've got uh, almost side doors upstairs. They have those little windows. I don't know if you, have you been there? I have not, no. Okay. Well, they got those side doors going up to the to the back, uh, what we call nosebleed section in most stadiums and stuff. But anyway, uh, you come up there, and uh, we could look through the little window in that because they had just locked the door, and they normally don't lock it on us. But anyway, they just locked the door, and then they came, you know, we saw some more on their monitors, and they came over some paper to take those doors. <laughs> they clipped it. Can you well, imagine Jackie, that? I appreciate you calling yeah. and telling us that story. It is great, and it just confirms what, what's going Can on. Can you there. imagine that, John? There they are looking at their telemetry, and they spot the monitors, and they're looking at the rover or a piece of it, and all of a sudden they t see two human beings walking into the scene. Yeah, absolutely. They were going to, just like Mars rover, cleaning off dust. They had their paper towels and Windex and <laughs> cleaned off so it could receive the signal. Or